How's it going everyone? We are in the process of replacing our cutlass bearing and unfortunately we were in a really big rush yesterday so um, I did get some photos but um, unfortunately we didn't really get any good video but yesterday what we did was we spent uh, most of our time getting the prop off so you can see here the prop is currently off the boat um, so in order to get the prop off you have a um, cotter pin that, that goes in here <clears throat> There's, of course, the props on. This is kind of the, the prop key right here. It fits into the slot in the prop. Um, and then you also have um, two nuts that are screwed on here to hold the prop in place. And then the cotter pin is put in place just to make sure the nuts don't fall off. So um, in order to get the prop off, it's usually pretty um, difficult because it usually, you know, is kind of um, on there really, really tight. And then you get some, some gunk up towards the top that, that really solidifies it and seals it in. So what we did was we used a um, pour tool, which I actually have right here. This is not how it looked when it came. It didn't have enough reach, so I modified it a little bit and extended the reach of it. So between a combination of this, some um, penetrating oil, and a rubber mallet, we were able to get the prop off. So the prop is off. And we also just removed the zinc anodes, which are down here. And now we are using the Strut Pro um, cutlass bearing removal tool to essentially remove the cutlass bearing from the, um, the cutlass without having to remove the entire prop shaft. So rather than pulling the prop shaft out of the boat, um, this tool will supposedly allow us to just essentially push the old cutlass bearing out and push a new one in okay so we are changing the cutlass bearing ryan went up to uh, go to the bathroom and stuff like that but so we were doing the cutlass bearing thing and we were cranking it and it wasn't going and we're like oh my god did you get the right size it's not happening i'm like it's in there and so we did this thing it's okay it's called shimming where you put, make that bigger so it's angled inwards towards this guy. And so then, he's cranking, cranking, it's not going, it's not going. All of a sudden you hear this pop, literally sound like a gunshot. The cut was bearing it loose. And you can see it in here. It came loose. But it li literally sounded like a gunshot. Ryan almost lost his hearing. But we did it. Now we just got to take it out all the way and then put the new one in. All right, so the reason I'm wearing headphones is because the cutlass bearing, um, they said it pops in the instruction manual and it more sounds like a gunshot going off right next to your head. So um, it's popped about three times now. So I figured I'd put my headphones on just to protect my ears. But uh, if you bring the camera in a little here, Sid, you can see that the cutlass bearing is coming out. And um, these pieces here, what are they called? Collets. Collets. Mm -hmm. Those are going through the cutlass and then essentially pushing out that cutlass bearing. So it's probably about uh, three quarters of an inch out. Um, so we're just going to keep cranking it here and see if um, yeah. we can get it. Oops, sorry. See if we can get it all the way through. So um, I'll go ahead and basically you just. You know, get a get a big wrench here, and then essentially you're just tightening each one equally and pushing it through. So I'm assuming as the cutlass bearing starts coming out more and more, it's uh, hopefully going to um, be easier as we go because then there's less friction between them. But I'm gonna put my headphones on in case it pops. So now it's now it's out a little bit more. I don't know if you can see, but it's probably about a full inch out. So um, they also said we were using some anti-seize lubricant, but they also said to use uh, the instructions said to use dish soap. Which is, I'm gonna lube it up some more because it's definitely starting to go through more. So. 
There we go. So it's definitely getting easier each time now. But the first one was extremely difficult to get out. I was almost in need of a breaker bar, even with a big 10 inch wrench, just to really get it out. So uh, this might be the original cutlass bearing that was you know, originally installed on the boat. I don't know. All right, so you all aren't going to believe this, but it turns out that Hunter, when they produced and printed the user manual for the boat, um, they printed the improper outer diameter dimension for the cutlass bearing. So the cutlass bearing, based off of what the manual states, is um, one inch uh, inner diameter, 1.375, which is one and three eighths outer diameter, and then a length of four inches. So that's what I purchased, and that's um, also the, um, the the tool that I purchased to remove the old cutlass bearing. Also, was expecting a, a one and three eighths outer diameter cutlass bearing. So that's why we had a lot of difficulties getting that cutlass bearing out um, because Hunter did not print <laughs> at, or measure the uh, outer diameter correctly. So. I looked this up online and there were a ton of people complaining about it on the um, Hunter Owners forum. So it's not something you know unique to my boat where it has a, a you know a 1.25 inch um, outer diameter for the cutlass bearing. Uh, it seems to be kind of across the board. All of the Hunter 376s have a 1.25 inch outer diameter cutlass bearing. But of course, I purchased what the manual stated and didn't consider looking it up online because I trusted the manual. Um, so we did purchase a replacement cutlass bearing. I checked pretty much every marine store in probably about a hundred mile radius. The closest West Marine that has the correct size cutlass bearing is in Buffalo, New York, which is about a six hour drive. So <laughs> we are not doing that. Um, I did uh, purchase it with overnight shipping and i purchased it saturday morning and of course apparently the the company that i chose um does not ship on the weekends um so we paid i paid more for the shipping than i paid for the colors bearing we're gonna be on the hard for probably an extra day or two to get that done it should be pretty easy to get the uh, new colors bearing in there um, once we do have it um, i'm probably going to go out and since the boat's on the hard i'm going to polish some of these windows here so you can see how how just you know blurry they are from little scratches and stuff. So I'm gonna polish them on the outside. <laughs> You're working it. We got our new inflatable paddle board. We're gonna pump it up for its maiden voyage. Well, we are finally getting the second reef line in. You can see if I pan the camera around here, we have the additional or second reef line um, going in right at the mast there. Um, what I did was I used a um, electrical snake to feed through the kind of metal um, portion of that electrical snake all the way through the boom. And I did that from um, forward to aft. So I did it from the area closest to the mast and um, basically just fed it up into the boom and then pushed it all the way down till it came out the back. And then what I did on the back was um, once it came out, I um, basically just inserted the line into the little kind of grabber piece on the end of the um, electrical snake. I know it's a very, <laughs> very uh, technical term. And then now I'm just slowly feeding it through. So I can show you the little setup here. So there's the electrical snake, or the electrician's snake. And you can see up there into the boom and then through 
right now about halfway through feeding it. Um, and I'm just going to uh, just get enough to get it through the boom and then probably just tie it off down there um, just so I have it as kind of like a, a feeder line. And then I'll probably just keep the, um, keep the spool out here, at least for the time being. And Sid has her little onions growing here. They're looking pretty good. And she cut them and they've already grown um, pretty extensively. She got, I think she cut them about two days ago. So you can see they're already starting to grow. And there we have it. You can see the electrician snake right there, with the wire snake, and then you can see the um, second reef line coming in, which is over on the starboard side. So on the port side, we have the uh, reef point number one, and then on the starboard side, we have reef point number two, which the second reef is basically just a more drastic reef to reduce the sail area even further. Here's a fun little trick you can do in the event that you don't have a clamp to clamp things that you're gluing together. So in this instance, we have a oddly shaped corner of, this is our um, galley area. And this piece of wood here was actually um, pulled off the countertop by accident. So unfortunately, I didn't have a clamp big enough to reach from this end down to this end to clamp it while the glue dried. Um, I put glue, you can see right there in the crack, as well as it's all on the inside in here um, uh, to adhere this little teak paneling to um, the wood portion of the counter. So what I did was I basically just took a, a piece of paracord. Um, it's actually, I don't think it's paracord. I think it's like three strand cheap nylon stuff. But you basically tie it in a loop as tight as you can onto something else. And then what you do is you wedge other items <laughs> Um, into it once you have that knot tied because it's going to be really hard to tie that knot as tight as possible without using a wedge of some sort to get in there and create the excess pressure you need. So in this case I used just a piece of wood I had laying around and I used a cloth um, to make sure that the counter does not get scratched. So you can see this is super tight right now. It's like a guitar string almost and it's keeping this piece clamped on there nice and tight while the glue dries. So we finally received our new cutlass bearing. We have here the brand new cutlass bearing. And this is the box that it came in. And this is the old cutlass bearing here. So like I mentioned, this is the correct size. You can see that the outer diameters now match. And if I stack it on top, you can see even better that they match. Whereas previously with the one and three eighths inch outer diameter, way too big for our strut or our cutlass. So um, you can see this is the old one. I was trying to figure out if there is some print on it. I was trying to figure out if it had like a manufacturing date. There is a 091-10. I don't know if that meant, means 2010 or, or what, but um, it is a Duramax made in the USA. And same deal here, Duramax Marine. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can pop this bad boy in. We are all set. See the new cutlass bearing in there, nice and shiny. We got the zincs back on, prop back on. I realized the nuts were on incorrectly from um, when they were on the previous time. That big one's supposed to go on the outside, not all the way around. And we also got the uh, pin in there to hold it in place. So I'm um, put the put the hex screws back in here to hold the cutlass bearing. And um, there's pretty much no wiggle room at all as a as a prop shaft so it should be. <laughs> so pretty excited and um, uh, Bert Jaden's actually getting us in today so we're gonna go back in the water in about the next hour or so. <laughs> 